Good morning, everybody. It's Don Dabney from Left Coast Classics, and this is just a few of our cars here over at, uh, at our shop here, our secret location in Sonoma, California. Anyway, today's kind of a fun day because for months I've been pursuing this one owner, 1962 Austin Healey BT7. This is a, a big grill, uh, top shifter, center top shifter, tri-carb car, one owner, just about 70,000 miles. The guy bought it brand new, and he's in his 70s now, and he's very reluctant to let it go, but it's just kind of that time in life to let it go. And I was a little apprehensive about buying the car, not because of what it was, but because of what I have to pay for the car. And my good friend, Mike Brewer from Wheeler Dealers, uh, told me, don't worry, I'll underwrite it. You're not gonna lose any money, go get that car. So Mike, thank you. We're heading up today, we're gonna document a bunch of this. And uh, right now, Jose and my wife, Sujin, are hooking up the trailer to our Chevy truck, and we're gonna hit the road up to Calusa, and we're gonna pick up this one owner, Austin Healey BT7. So come along, let's do this. I'm taking this one with me. She's gonna help me on my little adventure. We have a pretty good time, don't we? Calusa to pick up this Healy. That's my wife here, my fellow traveler. So that's a good way to test your mic. Why don't you actually <laughs> exert some audio from that pie hole? <laughs> Hi there, my name is Sujin Dabney. I'm an adventure seeker. I'm five foot nine. I'm an Aquarius and I'm searching for um, a man. Oh, wait. Got him. He's here. Never mind. I'm here. One owner, pretty cool. When was the last time this car was started, Dick? Uh, about a month ago. When I was here? Yeah. Right. All right, let's fire it up. All right. That is unbelievable. So we're here with Dick and his one owner Healy is 62 Healy. So I just wanted to get the story on the car. Okay. So you're, you said you're 80 now. Yeah. So you were 25 when you bought the Healy. 25 when I bought the Healy. So why the Healy? What's well, the I, al I always liked them. Uh, this is not my first Healy. I had one of the first uh, uh, BN7s on the West Coast. It was a red standard model with the disc wheels, which at that time was all I could afford. The difference wasn't that great, but I'm... <laughs> and a 25, though. Yeah, well, you know. yeah. And uh, that was the car that uh, I got married in for the first time. We've got some nice photos of that. What did this car cost brand new, do you remember? It was probably right around $3,500. Which was a pretty good chunk of change. Well, that's 62. it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. So... Uh, 
So uh -oh. you never really, I mean, the miles are so low on that. I just looked at the clock. It's a little over 80,000. Right. The car's never been driven a whole lot. So it's, was it ever a regular daily driver? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a daily driver for, uh, let's see, for three or four years. So that's about it. And then after and that. We drove, I drove up to Seattle and I was briefly transferred from San Francisco to Seattle. And so I drove up uh, there and then drove back down and then drove it back up again and then drove it back down when I was transferred back to San Francisco. But other than that, you so, just used the car for rallying. Yeah, and it was rallied a lot. And a little bit of pleasure. A little, well, yeah, um, but it was our only car for several years. Mm -hmm. So, but just we, never got that many miles, yeah. which is kind of cool. When, when we moved to Seattle, we packed packed the car. Well, of course, obviously we had a moving van, but we packed the car as full as we could, and put my one daughter back in the in the back there in her crib, and we only got as far as the middle of the Bay Bridge, the Highway Patrol. <coughs> said I was speeding, and I probably was. And he asked me where I was going, and I said, I'm going to Seattle. And he said, well, you didn't make it very far without getting into trouble. <laughs> and I said, mm, I guess not. And the fact that you could actually back that, what year was this? This had to be a That would have been 65. So in 65, you could stick a kid in a crib in the back of an Austin Healey yeah. and fly down the highway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, absolutely. But so that, that was interesting because when I originally looked at the car, I noted that it would probably have yellow plates with black lettering, and I asked, and then I looked at the title, and I said, what's with the hiccup in the uh, thing? And it was because you lived, briefly lived in Seattle, right? which only lasted, I think, six months. Six months. Yeah. You didn't like it, or something happened? And, uh, the and company transferred me back. They, and so you just, you ended up coming right back. So other right. than six months in Seattle, it's been a California car its entire Exactly, life. and it yeah. did come with yellow plates. You're right. absolutely right. I still have one around somewhere if I can dig it out. All right, cool, and the rallies. So, Tell me about the rallies. Well, uh, How'd you get into that? I don't really remember how I started. A friend of mine had an MGA in 57 and we entered a time and distance rally it was the one of the very few times i acted as navigator and uh, we actually won the damn thing i have no clue how well, you must have been fun did. because you just kept oh, we doing had, it we, we had oh yeah yeah we we rallied extensively i mean the gas was cheap there was no internet uh the bart hadn't seen around here most of the rallies were over in contra costa county and some down Livermore and San Jose and stuff like that. But BART wasn't in. See, BART cut the countryside up to where a lot of the little roads <coughs> didn't go through anymore. But that was... Uh... So you have a whole placard <laughs> with this car, with all the rallies this car's been in, or at least most oh, of Oh, no, them, right? those are only place plaques. I've got participation plaques, you know, probably a shoebox. Well, not a shoebox, but i got a bunch of participation plaques. Wow, and so that's part of the cool history of the car. Yeah. Uh, I took this to the... There was a event called the Sports Car Olympics, and I took it to Squaw Valley. It was, <coughs> it was the Winter Olympics had been in, in 1960 in Squaw Valley, so everything was still fresh and nice up there and so forth and so on. And uh, <coughs> we won the, uh, the Best Austin Healy Award at Squaw Valley, and I played it fair, too. I used one car for all the events. Mm -hmm. There were some guys who would use a different car for the hill climb, and a different no, car cheating. and a different car for the gym can. I'm well, they win every. Well, they had their win they had, every event with a separate car yeah, for every event. Yeah, they had their entrant number and they had their common name, but they didn't always use the same car. But the last, <laughs> the last event was a concourse, uh, obviously not a very high level one, but we were. Uh, you should have seen us trying to clean this thing up for the. <laughs> but anyway, we wound up with the aggregate high points for a Healy. So. And I hope an award for originality along the line somewhere. Mm, not that I know about that. Well, <laughs> I'm going to give it an award right now for originality. This is so original. Excuse me. <laughs> so, well, cool. So, I guess the big, the, 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 it must be hard to let go of it. Oh yeah. And we're, I'm grateful that that we get are the ones that get to. Well, I hope it finds a good position. home. Well, it definitely is going to find a good home. That's what I'm all about. Yeah, I hope um, it finds, and I and I hope it's relatively local too, so I can keep track of what goes on with it. Whatever happens, I'm going to make so, sure you know where it goes, who got it, and what's okay. going on. I mean, on hey, with it, it may go to Australia. Who knows? Yeah. But whatever. We'll track it. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay. And uh, so, leading up to getting rid of it, kind of hard. 
Yeah. It's kind of like, it's a family member. I mean, it's been with you 54 years, 50, same age I am. 54, That's 55, a long time. 55 years, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, yeah, it's, <clears throat> I will miss it. All right, cool. Well, do you, let's take your last ride. Sure. Let's do it. All right, so let's take a spin. Cars right up. Oh yeah. It's a great sounding car. Yeah. Well, I know you're gonna miss her, but I'm gonna find her a great home. I'm very excited about it. Well, it's a very special car, Dick. Yes, it is. And how cool to have something you love for so long and have so much enjoyment out of something you paid 3,500 bucks for. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't do that today. You can't beat it. Ready to say goodbye? I guess. I know. All right, we're going to keep you abreast of everything that happens with this car. Okay. Well, we did it. That was a lot of work. That was a lot of work. So we got we've got a '62 Healy sitting on the back of the truck on a trailer. Heading back to Sonoma. Thanks for helping. You're welcome. You're the best trust person to pick up a car yet. So this Healy, I got a call months and months and months ago about this car and this conversation about this car went on and on and on. Then I finally drove up and looked at it. And what was so compelling about the car was just that it was a one owner uh, 3000 and, and it's a tri-carb car. It's, you know, center shifter, 80,000 original miles. One owner bought it new at uh, Paul Felton in uh, south of San Francisco when he was 25 years old and he's 80 now. So I had my uh, reservations about buying it because he really wanted all the money for the car. But then I thought, like, where am I going to find a one owner Healy with a, with a great history of uh, racing, doing rallying? Anyway, so we, we long story short, we ended up uh, buying the car. We brought it back to Sonoma. Um, I filmed it all. I wanted to interview him. I thought it'd be really interesting to have this kind of video history, you know of uh, the original owner and the whole story on the car. And uh, so we brought it back. So the car gets back and then I'm staring at the car and I'm, for like a month, I don't know if I even want to detail it. It had all the grime of 50 years underneath it and in every crack. And while it had been garaged, I don't think the guy was really, you know, he wasn't detailing the car regularly, to be honest with you. And it was just, it was dirty, you know, but I kind of, struggled with well do i you know do i clean it up and and sh so people can really see the car because it really is quite well preserved when you figure that it's this age now it's, uh, it's the same age as me it's 55 years old but i i did made the decision that we would detail the car so you could really see every you know crack on it but we didn't do anything with spray paint or anything like that so it's a very honest clean thorough detail job so you can really see this car which is so cool because the miles are so low and because it's only had one owner and it's California car since new it, uh, it, it spent a few months in Seattle and uh, that was about it it's you can see it's got the black California license plates on it it would have originally had I believe orange plates with black or yellow plates with black letters but because he moved to Seattle briefly for a career that didn't really work out and came back to California I think he said six months later, the DMV reassigned the black plates at that time. And you can see the S on that. Um, so that would have been mid 60s, kind of 64, 65, right around that time. Is I know that because my mom had a, a 66 uh, Ford Country Squire wagon and it started with an R. So that uh, QRS, so that would have, okay, late 60s, probably 67, right around there. 
So other than that, it's just been a California car, and uh, it's cool. It's uh, I think it's mostly original paint. It's had a couple of bruises and things, and been touched up as he's gone. You'll see when you look at the photos, it's got the original seating, all the leather. The uh, the top and the frame are behind the custom cover, which was put in when the uh, roll bar went in, which was a very long time ago. Um, so that's set up like that, and. Uh, Anyway, it's just a cool car, and I I, uh, I like the patina of it. I kind of like one-owner cars. I love patina British cars. I don't know if the next guy is going to end up restoring it. It's a great car to restore, but I think it's kind of a really cool preservation piece for somebody with a collection that would want to have a car that has kind of a very clear uh, history and is just going to be the second owner on this 55-year-old this car. So anyway, I'm going to take it out today and shoot a lot of the exterior shots. You're gonna find video of the undercarriage uh, driving the car. It runs great. It really runs quite well. So uh, check it all out. If you have any questions, call me. I'm Don, I'm the owner here of Left Coast Classics. So let's head under the car. It's it's just it's cool. It's got all the original factory paint on the frame rails still. You can see all that. Just uh, I mean, pretty tidy and very original. Everything there.
So when you get into all these inner fender wells, like up here, there's just, there's no rust. They're super solid. The original asbestos above the uh, exhaust here, the heat. Spring mounts, super solid and good. Get up in there, you can kind of see into the dog leg area. Good shape. You can see here where they put in the uh, roll bar and they did weld it here for reinforcement so it goes up there and into the back seat where everything mounts. Well, that could be taken off. And uh, up here, it's nice and tidy in there. The rear panel. Usually these cars are just a lot of surface rust at the very least after this long. Dirty, but good shape. It should be a very easy car to restore if that's what your plan is. Doesn't look like you'll have to do any welding. You're certainly not going to have to do any rust repair. There's the original shield up there. Heat shield in the transmission tunnel. And uh, cleaned off the uh, engine area just to see where we had any leaks. Got a little bit of leak right there. And looking pretty good around the uh, oil pan gasket. So, yeah, all in all, not bad at all. Very original under here. You've had some, uh, obviously, some paint degradation at the front of the car because of the heat. But uh, in back, most of it's there. <clears throat> I don't know, but that exhaust almost looks original. Anyway, there you go. That is our one owner, California owned 62 Austin Healey BT7 undercarriage. Be sure to look at all the still photos. There's going to be a lot of those as well. It's the right rear wheel. Front right. darker over here same thing though pretty consistent side to side